Hi, everybody. Hi, everyone. Hello, everybody. And everyone who watches this later. Hello to the future. Uh, do we have a server? Hi, everyone. There you are. Yes. Okay. Uh, pull this open. Wow, five seconds. Very nice. Um, last time, you all made your way, uh, following the recommendation of Dex to place a remote scrying device that has a battery included in it that'll last for about a month. Uh, up on the cliffside, above uh, the place you were told is the lair, the forward fortress of Nasharala and Zoramos. On your way back, you decided to uh, climb up the mountains uh, that form this barrier here that you've seen from afar for some time. And... Uh, hiking episode. Yes, hiking episode. Um, see what you could see uh, of the, the terrain that had yet to be explored. Um, so Albus Taver has spent the past couple of days in a frenzy um, preparing all of the new maps he's going to present. <coughs> Excuse me, water. Uh, and um, <clears throat> perhaps the most... <coughs> Excuse me, water is difficult. Um, perhaps the most interesting thing that you spotted uh, from your high perch, uh, I believe it was at sunset, was a glittering, um, like, uh, like the dappling sun on the sea, uh, except perpendicular to the ground, um, somewhere, uh, in this area here. Do my gnome eyes see scintillating on the sunrise? Sunset. Could, could be a mirage glinting off the sand. Do you think that's what that is? I think that, it's possible. Yeah, that would be a mirage. Are, are these the things that the, the, the natural phenomenon that cast illusions? Uh, 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 of oasises in the middle of the desert with yes, women are. and coconuts? Yeah, the glint of water where there is none, specifically. That is what I have heard of them as in my stories. It will be a challenge moving to the east. Uh, I don't think we've ever had to deal with survival in, in that kind of environment before. Certainly not. Um, Certainly easy when you have a fresh source of water wherever you go. Ah, good point. Good point. Um, now, at this time, the redshift has begun uh, and is bearing down upon you from far away. Uh, so you have some time to get back. And I believe we were aiming ourselves at Arasith Tower uh, as it's close. And also the front Right. Front position. Uh, that's where the Brigadier still is, right? Uh, yes. She and uh, Expeditionist Mortier's team are all there. Yeah. I, I just remember that being part of what motivated us to go that way. So. All right. That, all right. that and exploring. So, uh, I will, in that case, uh, shunt you over that way in a roughly straight line, um, as we've already mapped out this entire territory. Um, so, over the course of a few days, 
about three, four days of uh, quick travel. Um, whoop, grabbed the wrong thing there. Oh, question. While we were up there, did we see any movement coming and going from around the, uh, the fort? The... I, I think you all kind of uh, stayed around a little bit and camped nearby, if I remember correctly, to, to watch um, on your first night. Um, but the answer to that was no. So from where we Even, were at, we didn't have a line of sight? Uh, from up in the mountains, it, it would have been kind of hard to tell. Gotcha. Just because it's it's so far away at that point. Okay. Um, okay. Y- you've got you've got a pretty you know rough lay of the land at this point from way up here, but um, uh, if somebody wanted to travel unnoticed, they could certainly do it um, across the the hundred or so miles that you're looking out here uh, before stuff disappears over the horizon for you. Um, so yes, uh, we will send you back home. And that will send you to this. Everybody, uh, Everybody got sight and everything yeah. on there? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I lowered it. Uh, nice. When Sharp sees you approach uh, from from out of the woods, um, he he puts his fingers to his mouth and he whistles and waves down to the to the rest of the group that you assume must be um, inside the um, the window there or, or the, the fort um, there with him. And uh, he'll shout, you can open the door. It works just fine now. Uh, campsite's on the left. And he'll hop down off of the wall. Yes! Remind me, remind me, what exactly, this is a wall of dirt and wood? This is a wall of wood. Uh, over the past about three weeks uh, that you've been gone, um, the team here has been, uh, well, they, they have deforested quite a bit of the area around um, the tower and uh, built up a uh, quick but not shabby um, uh, log and plank. Um, That's pretty good looking. That's quick work. Yeah, uh, a wall with a uh, short walkable path on top. Um, if you uh, if you really wanted, you could kind of squeeze yourself under the path uh, for cover. Um, and uh, there's a there's a couple ladders dotted here and there to help you get easy access up. Um, as you enter, it also looks like some of the doors and walls of the uh, base of the tower have been hammered out uh, to make walking about a little bit easier. I hope that wasn't distressful for Arissa. If you mention this when you see that when you see it, uh, she'll pop up next to you in her spectral form. And she'll say, oh, no, it was no big deal. I just told them the the spots that didn't have any circuitry inside. And so they were able to blast those open. And we go right around that. Oh, excellent. Then it seems the area we initially uh, chipped off some wall to inspect it was uh, precisely one of those places. So fortuitous of us. Yeah, we got lucky. <clears throat> hmm. I feel like... I want an extra layer of defense at the gate. Um, I probably have enough time before the redshift gets to us to move some of this loose dirt and make a small moat. Not, uh, not a moat moat, but like a... Like a trench. Yeah, a trench. A watery trench, so that way... Yeah, certainly. I mean, the, the, um, the, the obelisk would cover basically this entire map. Oh. So you'd be safe to, you know, meander about outside a little bit. I mean, I could... Trench on the outside? If, what was that? I was uh, asking about the trench on the outside or the inside. 
Uh, I think Nimbus wants to put a trench on the outside. Yeah. First. That's what I was asking. Like here. Yeah, yeah. Far um, enough that if there was a heavy storm, the erosion wouldn't just destroy our walls. Right. As well uh, to but, yeah. um, make the loose dirt a little harder to access for a certain burrowing somebody. But yeah, the um, the the obelisk has a ha, has a uh, radius, spherical radius. It's not restricted by the walls or anything. So um, you've got uh, at, even after the redshift arrives, uh, you'll all be able to, um, as usual, uh, walk a little ways outside the walls and be just fine. Um, Great. Well then, uh, Serb. To, uh, yeah, go ahead. Can you um, ballpark a one hundred foot? circle on the map somewhere just uh, so i get yeah. some idea how big that is so from uh well uh corner to corner this map is almost 200 uh from the center which is about here that's almost 100 yeah that's that's 100 in the, that direction you see the arrows so yeah if i so if i cast Plant growth. It would it would use a a third level spell slot, but here I'm just gonna throw yeah, it into chat. It, throw it in there. All right, so range one fifty feet. Choose a point within range. All normal plants in a 100 foot radius become thick and overgrown. Uh, what I don't know, if you look at part two, you have an either or option in the spell. So part two lasts for a year. How long does part one last? Yeah, it doesn't say, doesn't that, say. They, um, that it wears off. So I think the intention is just that you cause a space to become overgrown and then it would it would become less overgrown uh, naturally over time, like if there was a fire or if uh, uh, winter took out the, the, the plant growth and stuff like that. Um, so, I mean, yeah, if you wanted to do something where, like, the the vines roots and bushes became overgrown and tangled up um around uh around the outside um that would certainly be something that you can do um i think uh if you don't want to spend your week of downtime uh lawn mowing i may have you do an arcana <laughs> check to kind of direct the plant growth so that you uh don't overgrow the the grass and bushes and stuff that are inside the the uh, the turf right now. Well, it's it's like if I can if I could get it to this is what we were going to do. This was part of the original plan. Oh, you can exclude them. Never mind. You can straight up exclude it for free. Thank you, Mont Lauren. Cool. I, I didn't know fun, but the spell doesn't let me. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that's but I, I saw that it was in, mentioned in the part two part, not in the part one part. So that's the, what I was asking about was like, how long does this last? Can I, can I muck with the shape of it? Cause what I want it to do is go around the outside. Yeah. Yeah. This is, this is totally viable. Um, Yeah, if Alvis Taver is, you know, that might be a good point. Alvis Taver wanting to, um, wanting to actually plant the hedges in specific locations and then have Naya overgrow them. Okay. So that they are, so that they're strategically placed instead of just, you know, whatever. Uh, I'm good with that. I have a hundred foot radius, and I really kind of only want to cast this once because it's a level three spot. Yeah, and hundred foot you know, radius. Yeah, it's huge. All yeah, so that's in a 100 foot radius. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's fucking great. <laughs> well, it is for our purposes here, but I mean, this wall that they built while we were gone is fantastic in terms of well, that kind of solved the hedge problem. 
Um, but to reinforce that, uh, this one-shot wonder spell might be a good idea. Yeah, we probably won't have time to get you razor wire right now, Alvis, but uh, I do no. like the idea of planting some hedges before we cast that overgrowth and then definitely casting that plant growth. I think that's great. Okay, all right. So we're still on plan. That works. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The, the uh, In the time frame, uh, that would be like an upgrade, like back in the old days. Here's a question. Here's a question. Um, vitality in the plants does it say that plant has to be alive or rooted or could we just take twigs from the nearby trees and kind of plant them in a radius then poof them out so it I, says I, all say normal plants I, I, I think there's a method of uh, hedge growing that does involve putting dead thorns and stuff into uh, the initial s scaffolding of a uh, hedge growth uh, just to act as a base for the stuff to grow up and on. So even if it like didn't make the plant itself grow or anything like that, right? It would encourage it to grow in the sort of shape that you want, like a framework. I get it. Yeah, well, I can, historically that's what they thought it did. I can, I, I, I can certainly see like a um, using using dead plants as a as a base and guide for this. However, um, I would exclude dead plants from this the spell i don't think it makes sense to um if if they're already long dead and wilted i think if there were if there was a plant that right was it's still not no alive no and... i don't mean dead and wilted i mean take like active live tissue that's still like vascular oh, like a fresh cut from a tree yeah interesting does it can you make a clone basically yeah i see mm. let me let me look at my character sheet and see if i have a spell for that That's definitely a DM question. Though it's funny if it did work, I could imagine like modern pot groves, right? You know where they use <laughs> well, this. Oh hell yeah! Okay, so 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 my my question is then: so if you if you did go go to a, an oak tree and rip a stick off of it and put it in a pot and water it, what would happen over a month? Oh. If you well, put you Clonex have... on it, it, it would be just fine. <laughs> well, it's not just Clonex, because Clonex is a mean to treat it. like So you can cut various different uh, shafts into the cutting uh, that you made there uh, yeah. on, on specifically the wound. Then you put an ointment on it. Uh, traditionally, it was honey, but nowadays we have like special stuff with antibiotics and other bullshit in it. it. It's called it. Clonex. Yeah, right, and then right. you put Clonex on it. Uh, it will... Uh, make a sapling. It, it that is a genetic clone of the tree, which is why I find it funny. If if this spell does work that way, it would be hilarious because okay, I mean, yeah, a modern pot grove person would cut down like just the top of all of his weed crop, and then he would put that or she yeah, exponential that, yeah you know, yield totally. Pot and then pff, just build another plant. It would be like exponential yield times two. Yeah, I, I mean, um, the, I think the idea behind the the spell is that it's it essentially only accelerating the growth that would naturally be there. Yes. Um, so if, if you, you use can, part A, if you can arrange a situation where this thing would naturally grow, if if given the time, then plant growth should function. Um, what that means then is I would expect you to do some um, survival work to arrange these these clippings properly uh, to make sure you didn't just, you know, kill them. I can see that, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I don't know that we need to plant any more trees. I mean, we are clearing in the middle of the forest for what it's worth. That is true. Yeah, you are still uh, there. They, um, you know, uh, uh, many of them have been have been chopped down, but still, like just outside the wall, plenty of trees still surrounding you. Um, I was very specific. Thinking hedges in all directions. 
Yeah, I think the hedges are great because that makes it harder to climb the wall. Like, I think yeah, that's a yeah. fantastic idea. The uh, fire the, resistant. The, that's proof. actually the one other thing I was going to say is whatever, whatever it is has to be able to survive a rain of fire. I'm almost wondering if the better approach would be trying to grow them and kind of bend them as they grow into some sort of arches so that way we can use it as a um like a, a armature for um putting down putting dirt up. and being be able to make like uh you know more more permanent like roofing that's fireproof uh, like all, all oh those... um what the hell are those things called uh generally you see them made out of wood so that the outcropping of the wall is just a little bit farther so that you can make like a, a lattice yeah. yeah i mean like a topiary kind of thing yeah yeah or a hedge a frame yeah the old, though old you might kind of... not do it because we want to put more fireproof roofing at the top uh traditionally in castle engineering those constructions would also have uh crenulations 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 yes. yeah yeah the but that's for your archer you can so so that you can look down at a 90 degree angle and shoot somebody right so you can aim and there's just that lip at the bottom of the crenellated wall that would theoretically protect the archer from anybody at a steep angle trying to shoot him it should theoretically block them block the arrow that I'm thinking of because I'm but thinking crenellation, of But crenellation has a deeper cut in the wall as a fence. A regular fence, you know, is about, what, somewhere between knee and thigh high. But a crenellated wall has that same height except that it's cut out with a little lip at the bottom. Yeah, exactly. For archers. Well, <clears throat> whatever our effort, uh, I am happy to pitch in. Like, uh, I'd like the idea of strengthening our defenses. Getting more uh, cover from that fire rain would be hella useful, I agree. Uh, though, I mean, I don't know that we are really going to be able to effectively address that with the resources on hand. True. At the very Which least, why we should, there's, but uh, we might be able to kind of slow well, we it could down also, if there's large yeah. stretches of um, uh, soft earth underfoot here. Uh, it is possible that we could potentially start making a bunker system, like an underground sort of thing. I was talking about the uh, the blah blah. What is it? The trench at the uh, foot of the castle on the inside of the uh, perimeter for us to travel through. Hmm. I mean, I had been thinking about, uh, again, some sort of a moat waterway sort of system because uh, what's going to be the first thing to nullify the morale of our foes than the very thing they dread most, a pool right. of water. Uh, Absolutely. The, and I think uh, I it's actually... I think it's fair to say that if we build our defenses so strongly, we kind of we kind of force them to use meteoric fire because that's all they've got. Thoramos is going to well, do that anyway, yeah. unless we give them a reason not to. Which I have one, but it requires me to break the bubble. And there's the um, okay. burrowing woman as well. Um, though I was. Thinking just because of uh, uh, because of whom is making the channels uh, and the trenches that uh, we could actually uh, create a scenario for our advantage by making both a moat but also a reasonable trench and sapping system. Before we start doing real earthworks i think the question would have to be posed to the brigadier about how how far do we need to actually go to defend this location would those would those resources and time and effort be better spent at um orcas at, at somewhere else or is this the place where we would make a stand like that 
Oh, what we've been talking about has just been earthworks, right? Uh, like this isn't even serious fortifications. Yeah, well, really, we're, we're talking about how we're gonna, Yeah, really, we're talking about how we're going to pass the redshift. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like yeah. we're stuck here, so we might as well strengthen the place while we can. You know what I mean? But I, I'm serious about that uh, that double whammy of a trench system too. If if you could set up a, a, a fucking moat with water in it, Nimbus, that would be awesome. But then if you could also help, in addition to the uh, inner uh, trench that I wanted to build for the inner perimeter, uh, with a tunnel system that could potentially go underneath this uh, moat and into some discreet location off into the woods, then we got more than just a defensible location. We got an offensively defensible location out of this tavern. Right, because you'd have something. a sally port. Yeah, I get it. Hmm. Well, uh, I honestly don't know how far the dirt goes before we start hitting... Uh, Stone underneath. stone underneath. Unfortunately, right, right. I don't have the means to manipulate that quite as easily. See, as in, this is we why. I'm... Oh, wait a second. I this think is I why can. I think we should. Um, uh, even if if you could manipulate stone, that's even better, Naya. But well, I mean, I'm looking um, here to uh, incorporate to this illusion. Elvis Taver uh, points out the gate entrance. We should make that into a ramp. Of some sort, of some kind of incline, we should use such earth from the inner perimeter to make a ramp there, and we can use that ramp as the focus point to the outward tunnels. It would be good because if anything bad were to happen, say the tunnels were to be compromised and invaded, which is very much a possibility because of her ability to tunnel through uh, the earth, uh, we could close it off easily and still be able to use the trenches on the inner perimeter. And it gives you enough earth to work with to at least get uh, underneath the moat that you built. That, that would be good, but again, we have to figure out what, what exactly is working here. The, um, I would wager that the weight and moisture from the would sink anything we build underneath immediately. We have the structure to reinforce it. Yeah, we're in a forest. We just lop down a tree, cut down a few branches, and lay it perpendicular. True. My uh, my teacher made me read a lot about engineering before he let me out of the caves. He told me, until I understood how my very home and birthplace was made and sustained, I wasn't allowed to see the glory of the sun. I do not have a skill that allows me to transform earth like, like I can with plants. Yeah, this is pretty high level stuff to be able to manipulate stone. Yeah, I think like shapes a, down a you can like affect a five by five by five area and make, like crude object or cabinet. Right. Little and then a full cast spell slot. Yeah, exactly. Um So the uh the brigadier, uh looking a little more haggard than usual, uh swings from her canteen and gets up and says, So not, not to interrupt your fun. How how did it go? Well, we were able to get it planted successfully. Um, I'm pretty convinced that we've got it, it. Uh, not only yep. defended with the bear trap, but as well the uh, sort of disguising that we put on it to camouflage it. It would be very, very, very difficult to locate unless somebody is just permanently walking around with detect magic and happens to walk up along that ridge. Even then, oh, it would be very unwise to pick it up. Yes, we, we they also pay the price. The glyph yeah, would... to uh, guard it. Good and a bear trap. Dex informed me that you had you had placed it. Uh, was did anything else happen after that that around the area? Oh, Elvis 
why don't you show off your new map? Oh, yes, yes. Here you are. Your copy, of course. And then I can show it with the uh, drafter's copy. <clears throat> she, uh, yeah, she, she unfurls it and looks it over. She says, good, so you were able to get a good look at everything. That's Absolutely. We, we got a new peak as well uh, right there. We should send scouts to that point. It's also good for uh, camping. A nice uh, flat location to give that viewpoint that we described. Maybe even a good locale for, uh, for like a watchtower or something. It's not a terrible idea. If we can afford to put an obelisk up there. Uh, only if we're sure those dragons won't find it, though. It is pretty close to where they layer. Uh, Most definitely. I was thinking more of a uh, cash drop. That's an even better idea, actually. Uh, I am still wary of sending... Um, scouts up uh, further than this tower um, as long as we don't know what those two are up to or the rest of their uh, family, I, I suppose. Um, Diligent, never concerned for the welfare of the expedition. Very good, very good. Yes, yes. We, we can't simply send people out into what we know to be uh, enemy territory, lacking any other term. Um, they know we're here and we know they're here, and we're likely to cross paths with them again sooner or later. So, uh, frankly, I'd rather it be you than anybody else in the commission, um, if only because I know you can handle it. Or I think you can. We can handle it. We're getting better. So, it does concern me that we, we should definitely have a plan B. The, this tower here, this could be abandoned. This could be a red herring. I agree. Well, sort of. We, we certainly can't abandon uh, Arisa here. Um, who oh, is, absolutely not. No, I just meant... currently uh, sitting on top of the lip of the falling tower. Uh, oh, I, I was misunderstood. Not, not this place. I meant, uh, I, I meant our watch over uh, at the, the, the dragon's place where we put the thing to watch them. Oh, I see. Oh. Okay. Uh, oh, you mean Demir's lookout? Yes. Well, not Demir's lookout itself, but the thing it's looking out. Excuse me, look at what? Oh, yeah, Elvis. Uh, it's not marked on the map, Elvis? That's weird. I mean, when an explorer gamer explains, he puts it on the map. Yeah. She she holds it up to her good eye and looks again. And She just pauses. And... Um... But you know, the fortress okay. itself, okay. where the salamander there. is in front of, that could be a red herring, Alvis Taver says. He technically started before Demira. I understand. Uh, wait, so what, what are you saying is a red herring? And by whom? Uh, the fortress could be a red herring uh, by the giants. You know, they... Right, we've seen no activity. I think I follow you, Elvis. If if it's been abandoned, it could be that we're wasting a bunch of time and resources on uh, on nothing, and that may be what they want from us. Do you think? Maggie? Yeah, right. especially if they uh, notice uh, that happening and then just do nothing about it. In fact, doing nothing about it might be the best and easiest option. They don't strike me as people who are aware enough. Um, to have noticed. That being said, there is the possibility. I'm only bringing this up to say that we should try to figure out a way 
to get into the fortress. Oh, I don't think so, but okay. I I can't rule out your suggestion. Do you think Magnus lied to us then? I don't I don't think so, but I also don't think that he might be uh, aware of the actions that could be taken by, you know, his superiors. Could the, be uh, just one location of many where his story could have happened to many different, uh, uh, many different individuals of his kind. It's also possible that it was abandoned directly as a result of us fighting them to a stalemate. Um, the one we saw outside may not have been not allowed in so much as literally no one answered the door. He may not have realized, for example, that it had been abandoned. Hmm. For all we know, they're still being uh, punished and chewed out by a daddy, um, adopting daddy, um, Dragon King, and that they haven't even been allowed to return yet. Yeah, I'm not saying that it's not good that we don't have a scout there. I'm saying that eventually, if nothing happens and nothing remains to happen, it is our best uh, diligence, our, our responsibility to, to try to get in there, see what's going on. If it's abandoned, I'll, I'll... that's something we might be able to learn from, similar to Morio's place. Well, I'm say Hey, if I can get the chance to raid a dragon's lair that the dragon has stopped caring about, I'm all in. Brigadier, let us take care of that, and we'll crack that thing wide open for you. I remember them saying that it required a magical password in order to get in. Like, it, this is no mere moat like the one that we suggest building. The courtyards were open, though. It's, it's possible an opportunity might present itself in a vulnerability they're not uh, aware of. Potentially, if we have a really good mountaineering team, yeah. Or someone capable of flight. Didn't Magnus speak of a, a, a password or, or ritual uh, to teleport there and back rather than to get in and out? Uh, That's exactly what I meant. Is that uh, that password might be key to um, accessing key features of the fortress, not merely just entering it, but the uh, outer facilities could just be a facade or merely a fence. That's true. Likewise, with people with magic like this, um, Though they could have the hubris to think that no one would merely fly over, or they have not faced anybody who could fly over. I, he, I don't know. Uh, I, I just, I, I am scared to even attempt that unless we have a good uh, proxy, uh, just because the magical implications of a defense from aerial uh, entrance right. generally isn't pleasant. It occurs, is, it occurs to me, though, that Morio's fortress had no such defenses. Uh, we do know that they operate uh, independent of each other, our, our princes and princesses of the dragon here. But I suspect they're all guilty of similar thinking. We've certainly seen evidence of that so far. Uh, I think they may actually possess the hubris you're talking about. Hmm. Certainly. Anybody how, uh, how how well do you think their um, magma lava pumping system is going to work if it gets um, filled up and hardened with obsidian? As I'm thinking about it, simply spraying gallons and gallons, 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 gallons of water uh, could could very well be enough to jam it. Although. One would suspect then that when it rains, that would already be enough to destroy it. It could be something that could simply be dispelled. Cold enough, too? I mean, it would evaporate to steam before touching the lava. 
Oh, he can make his water very cold, if I recall. Oh yeah, no this this water is as cold as the depths of the um, elemental plane of water. It is it is not warm. To make it warm, I have to shoot it through a ball of boiling water. I think can add salt too to make it salty. That might uh might help the process. Not as uh, keen on my alchemy in that regard, but. Uh, I bet Smitty probably knows what happens if you take molten metal and add too much salt. I think I am keenly curious about that lava mechanism. Yeah, me too. I, I'm also, uh, sadly, I can't bullshit Alvis Tavern knowing anything about molten salts. It seems a bit too specific. <laughs> So then she says, uh, we have Dex and a few other expeditionists on um, 24-7. Wait, uh, 24-10. Uh, uh, watch duty on this device that you set up. Um, they're going to be keeping watch on it from Orvis. Um, so you should be able to get in touch with them if you want to check up on how it's going, but they'd have to send us updates with sending. Well, we could talk to them via the uh, obelisk, right? Yes. Oh, I mean, once we're out in the field, they... oh yeah, right, gotcha. Oh, okay. it, while observing, while we're on approach, if a giant force suddenly appears, then we can get the call back to uh, avoid any mishap process, or at least know to tread carefully as we approach. But, uh... It may be a bit conservative, but perhaps we should wait another two redshifts, and if we see nothing happen in that duration, well, we'd have to send somebody to go fetch the object anyway around that time. Um... So that, so that may be the time that we investigate this for uh, first hand. That seems sound to me. Due in diligent as always. In the meantime, Mortier, I'd like your group to stay here. We need to make sure this place is fortified and with everybody else's help uh, during this redshift, we should be able to take some of those suggestions on. Uh, and um, Lauren, while your team is gone, uh, we'll make sure to hold out here. So in the meantime, for that duration, what is your plan? Do you have any recommendation? You're building that trench system. Is the well, yeah. when when you're ready to go out and the you know without dying. Uh, <laughs> I am kind of curious if that uh, if that desert out there is actually a desert, and if so, if we had any sense of its fastness. Uh, my main concern, though, is that without knowing where our our enemies are, any further exploration is going to be relatively fraught, especially since we know they're attacking somewhere, uh, even if it wasn't one of our targets. It will. Perhaps making a good connection to shit, uh, out of character. What's what's our friendly eyeball's name again? Van. 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 Uh, making a successful connection or intermediate, uh, intermediate step between uh, already established locations and Van's encampment might be the wisest decision then. 
there is a, a big swath on my map here, and he gestures, uh, that at least to me isn't well explored. That is true. There, There is a wide space out there. I wonder if that's the best use of our time. Uh, well, it, it, it's another um, it's another type of fortification. It it, it fortifies our um, supply line in a sense, um, our backup. If we can uh, essentially shorten the distance by making the land known between everybody in the commission, uh, between location to location, then essential goods and personnel can get from location to location faster. And we might be able to save on the precious hours or so that we didn't have the first time they attacked us. That is so true. We get to mirror there on time. We would likely need one, maybe two, maybe even three obelisks, forts, similar to this one uh, between those locations. I doubt anybody would be able to make the trek safely from Van's outpost to Pier, for example, uh, within one waning. So it might be wise to also wise. Still, the matter of the um, necromancer who is harassing the goblin that we chased roughly into our currently uncharted area. Necromancer? Yes, remember yeah, the yeah. Uh, the ones who were raising the um, goblins dead that we had to um, put down and we noticed the necromancer? That, that is yeah. true, but I, I've i had uh, some contact with Chief Gatma and um, it seems that they have not had a reach of those events since last winter when we first encountered them. I wonder if the thing that um, Mortier um, maybe blew up, maybe blew up um, in her presence uh, was part of that necromancer's method of getting around. She, she That would not she, surprise me. She speaks up and she says, you mean that 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 black stone thing that I that I found. Yes. Hmm. That that was an idea that I had. Perhaps a different form of teleportation circle, but kind of crafted differently and then perhaps guarded with a glyph that unfortunately was set off. Well, I, I did pass it along to Dex. Uh, so he should still have it. Probably high up on a shelf somewhere, hopefully. In a box. Uh, <laughs> Warden? I... I don't think he wards most of the stuff inside his office, but should he? You could do it for him? I could. Do it would probably be a good idea. He's around his workshop. Sure. Uh, I wouldn't want to uh, lay down dangerous glyphs in there. No, you, you would want to lay down dangerous glyphs, right? I don't know why I have advantage. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, th this is where his evilness is coming in. Is it, It's Loki-like. He's, he's encouraging her to do mischievous things. Yeah, you're totally going to get to the, the Lady of Hynelia to, uh, to, to kill a man um, for no reason. Have to kill somebody to place a ward! It's protecting him. She says, I, I... I mean, if he asks me to, I'd, I'd be happy to, of course, but I, I don't... I'm not going to sneak into his workshop and, and start start throwing glyphs all over his, his stuff. I don't even know what most of that stuff does. 
quite but honestly, he, 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 has the, the he has the ability to seal things from evil in various ways of his own. So I think uh, trusting him to use those processes in his own judgment might be uh, a little more ideal. Nimbus. He is an Never the wise. Nimbus, Nimbus is wise. He, he points out a good point. Sharpens it to uh, a finity that uh, I, I cannot refute. Anyway, if that thing was making undead show up, should he really have that in his office? I mean, the undead could be quite profitable. I, I, I couldn't say if I've seen it before. Wait, what? What? <laughs> I mean, they're they're a decent labor source. What? If you're into slaves. No, well, I mean, that's, that's the beauty of it, right? What? If you're a warlock. Do they count as slaves if they're not, you know, themselves? You know, there was actually a play from the uh, the, the Troop of No Return performed uh, just once because it was rather controversial. In fact, we had to stop before the final act because we were about to be uh, charged with heresy. But it was very <laughs> much about the morality of... Um, using the undead as workers and the idea of somebody who wanted to die an honorable death so they could, you know, rest and instead that um, their their spirit came back to see that their body had been reanimated and used against their will and uh, uh, words were said and clashes were had. Not like, not like they're using it. Uh, you know, different cultures have different opinions it, it, it was it was a very tough play to perform as it was. Um, the set While I understand the argument toward consent for necromancy, it, it just most of the time it's far too messy, and it's better if you just don't don't. Probably, I agree. Yeah, we 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 should at least like investigate killing the necromancer, or or maybe even the stuff that might he have left behind that could be found or turned to misuse. If there are one Finding such the as... Finding the undead is what you should do with them, yes. If, if there are ones such as Tilda who has the ability to uh, create and sustain something that resists the redshift and they are not, not in fact hostile, but um, perhaps just a little wayward in their thinking, it's not beyond us to try to negotiate with somebody, but of course, really? if, if we meet hostility, well, someone who's been losing the dead around our uh, allies probably. Brigadier says, right? yeah, you're right, I'd, I'd rather make as many allies in the place as we can, of course, um, if, well, if they're all like this Dragon King and they prefer the Redshift exists for their own uh, desires, then we may end up at an pass with any given one of them. But hopefully, uh, most anybody who happens to survive in here, however they do it, um, would be able to see our reason for things. Uh huh. Alvis Taver just smiles. Now, Alvis Taver, have you uh, have you managed to line this ma new uh, map of yours up with the uh, Veshin one that we received some time ago? I mean, I've had a lot of time to. Do you want me to make a roll? Um, you don't really need a roll. You can you can look at these maps if you want. I can pull you back to the, to the world map if you like. Yeah, I actually, I don't know what the uh, two maps are, are called, so I don't know if I can open them up myself. Um, yeah, yeah, here. Uh, you're on the world map now, and uh, down in the document section, you've got the contemporary map of Vesoth. Thank you. Give me a second. Map of Vesoth Contemporary I know we've had talks about it. I mean, you went out of your way to get this thing uh, bought. Hmm. Oh, 
Yes. Yes, absolutely. I, I, I have it. Yes, I, 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 I quite so. I see it. Uh, the bay has flooded a bit, but I see it. Yes, here. Look, Brigadier. And then I pointed out. You, you have your map right now that you can study since I'm not out and about and updating it. So you can see being a subscriber of the uh, of the pre Albus Tavern map subscription made a member free of charge by myself. Hmm. You know, y'all can you know. pay for that map subscription by uh, just offering me a gold piece every single uh, <laughs> month. In fact, that's cheap for this kind of quality goods. I have not only maps of just this area, uh, which is brand new, spanking brand new. You're not going to get maps of this area anywhere else in the uh, empire. But I have your more traditional sassy maps as well. After looking at this, I'm realizing the tower that we um, took the boat to might very well have been uh, uh, Colas. Then thinking about it, whatever remains of the the city of shos up there uh at the edge of the desert where the mountains open up and that might have been some sort of barrier that we were seeing uh which is my first suspicion when it was mentioned and that that might be the source of it but also be as simple as ruins buried in the sand there that's true yeah. it could be in less condition than orvis which was you know rather intact for a Interesting reason. It would be a good spot to uh, shore up our defenses as well if it proves to be abandoned. Uh, and I get to go see the desert. I think we should go investigate is what I'm saying. I mean, so here, since we've gotten back to that point, uh, Mont Laren, um, I saw three potential options for ourselves, um, all of which are very good. Um, we can either... Um, make our defenses between routes more sustainable uh that that includes travel and stuff like that so that's uh embarking on the endeavor that would be setting up a route between here and van's location um we can go visit the desert um now we also have a a thing to look for uh in the desert as well uh, with the prospects of what that could mean, you know, uh, further defenses, uh, something to help uh, detract attention from this tower, so this tower can be defended up more, um, which that is very valuable. Um, or we could uh, shore up on inter uh, internal defenses uh, already, not um, so much the path to Van's location, but uh, our... Uh, our control of the land as is. Brigadier says, <clears throat> well, as always, our priority is forward momentum. Hmm. I can give Vanthor his XK out the call and see how he's doing in his investigation. Uh, last update I heard from him, he found uh, the remains of a city as well. I, uh, did he tell you about that? Um, it was the first time hearing about it. I remember our, our hope from the information that we had gotten from previous um, encounters with the past that uh, Vragend up there may have been a veritable cache of uh, artifacts and relics of power, but no, I don't think we've actually heard too much about what they've discovered there. Yeah. Well, he may not be back at his uh, lair yet, but... So... Uh, uh, there might be a lower officer there. I know there was a pretty sizable force. To, yeah, to uh, not detract from 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 my uh, from my dear love for Van, uh, the 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 idea that he is he is and once again another party has discovered some vast awesome ruins before us. Uh, I 
I kind of want to go to the desert now. Uh, uh, just, just purely because I want to be the one who discovers a goddamn lost city. Well, I no need to be know. selfish, but I mean, like, I can tell you, and names that get another scout out there first. Not right now, anyway. Um, if if that's where you want to go, you have my approval. But um, considering the situation where these dragons, even thinking back to the the three that we lost in the initial uh, expedition of Orvis. I would feel much more comfortable if we, if we believe this to be a, a, a city who, who knows what remnants of the redshift over the years have piled up in that place. Uh, as to what Van has found, uh, something, um, something about upside down buildings. He was talking. Um, oh dear, that dude, sounds that like redshift. It does sound like redshift. Uh, I I will like, repeat. Like, it, it it is very important that we also shore up our capabilities from traveling to establish outposts. So it would be uh, also wise to go in that direction as well. I agree. Depending on what he's found up there, I may ask him to uh, peel his ice talks away from uh, whatever ruins he's discovered and, and make a concerted and stronger effort to uh, connect with us uh, down here. Um, Might be wise if he found somebody meeting him somewhere halfway. I merely suggest only, the desert because I want some glory. My only worry is that there may be more dragon kin anywhere else in this area that we have not yet uncovered. Who knows where their turf is. Magnius didn't, he couldn't tell us anything, but what he did tell us that there were, uh, what, seven of them? Right. We might just stumble into more. Right. Yeah, of, the... of the locations Magnius pointed out, one of them wasn't the desert, was it? Around that where that city is? His claim was that he did not really know where the other uh those those siblings to his superiors uh fought. I see. Oh. It was not very useful information, although knowing how many of them there are is. Um Speaking of location, the territory that we are currently dealing with between Nasrallah and Zuramos. Hmm. That manner that we found that um, led to what may have potentially been uh, some part of the Underdark, or it's a very cavernous area. Has anybody actually? explored that further or is it simply an area that we have patrols but don't don't really deal with much discord problems hang on yeah, no problem that would be hello, hello. that would be a fast asset to our to our toolkit small issues um but i'm back now uh you were asking about the the connection to the to the um Caverns, yes. Yeah. Uh, she says, um, we had some scouting parties go down there, um, but it seemed fairly dangerous, and while there may be value in exploring and seeing what we can find in a place like that, um, I have not dedicated a lot of manpower to it because I can't justify uh, sending groups of people down below just to um, wander around some caves uh, that may or may not get us any closer to our destination. Understandable. 
Um, if we have the spare manpower, it again may be worth it if we find something similar anywhere else. Uh, certainly, we should see what it can do for us. Um, but as I've said before, uh, once we solve the redshifts, there will be plenty of time for treasure hunting, and I'm sure plenty of the folks involved in the commission now will want to make quite the career out here. Um, <laughs> not so Good sure life. about myself, but that's far in the future. Uh, All right, guys. Grand Tassel, I have, I have no qualms with you wanting to investigate this this desert that you found. Um, well, I mean, it was even inspired by you. You're, you're the one who uh, asked to see if the uh, maps correlated. Well, it's good to know that the, the land hasn't changed too much. In a thousand years, this map proves useful after all. Um, Do you want it? I believe we have a few copies of it back at Orbis. Don't worry. Okay. Um, you can you can hold on to yours. Although, if you if you'd like to make me a copy of my own, uh, it does not need to be particularly detailed. But I certainly wouldn't mind having. You have the special Alvis Taver uh, package of maps there. Uh, I'm just currently updating the 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 one of this place because actually, I think according to your contract, I technically am, or well, the the Empire is technically the owner, proxied through me, of all of the maps that you create. Um, Did I give the Empire free reign of my map? No. I would have to double check my records, but, but they're all the way back at Orvis. Uh, in I mean, office, so. work for higher clauses are pretty pretty common. They are. Yeah, I was going to say, that's how it works when, when I do stuff for people. Uh, for, for the Empire... Yeah. I mean, Never if you wanted to make everything a market transaction, then you'd probably be behind rather than ahead the uh, map subscription thing. So it's probably best just to, uh, you know, let things be. A lot of the work that we're getting done, for example, is mostly at material cost, not um, a fee for the work done, for example. Almost definitely. And, and yeah, she, so says, she says, uh, "Never fear. I have, I have Mercutio running the books on a weekly basis. Uh, you, you, and everyone else will be duly compensated uh, by the Empire if you're done in uh, appropriate ratio to the tasks that you've completed out here. Um, once you, uh, you know, retire or whatever it is you want to do after this, um, uh, that's not up to me." Does does this club of yours really hold such sway with all of its uh, employees? Oh, I'm a student. I'm in debt. I understand. So I, I suppose that some employees uh, are, are absolutely less swayed and, and uh, more uh, normal uh, like any other member of a guild. But in my particular case, uh, as not only a student, but uh, as an adoptee of the guild, uh, I, I am in debt. To leave the guild uh, would mean an exorbitant amount of uh, 
wealth that w would need to be accrued. That is a difficult situation. Sharp tells me that in his case, he has um, relatively free movement. You I mean, I have... I have relatively... Really I, I have relatively free... It, it's not a bad thing. Everybody seems to think it's a bad thing. Have you lived in a cave? Uh, Can't say I have. Only about a week once, but... Try, try more like... A fair bit of underground. I lived with the dwarves for a long time. No, no. Try, try like... 12 years and then only with periodic visits I mean I we were hiding from a pack of griffins that week it was a uh, rough trail I, I studied for 7 years uh, in a seaside cave but it was very open and had a very beautiful view of waterfall that yielded its presence from passerbys Brinthian, I did not know the kiss of the sun's warmth until I was 16. Must have been a heck of a sunburn. I mean, do you look at me? <laughs> it still kind of hurts my eyes. Maybe like glasses or something. On Tassel, I think I'm going to have a uh, see if I can arrange a uh, overseer. Uh, Vin, Vin, was it? Uh, yeah. Whenever I get back to the Empire, just for my own curiosity. Don't worry about it. What? He's a really good guy. It's clear he's left quite the impression on you. Oh, but absolutely. I wouldn't know how to speak giant without him. I'm an educated man. It'll definitely be interesting seeing what we can uh, get set up around here, though. Um... We're yes, going to be here uh, for a bit. We should definitely think about whatever we're going to do with the plants uh, outside the reach of uh, our current protection. Do what we're going to with them before the uh, redshift itself is upon us. Tunneling? Oh, well, I mean with the plants, but yeah. Um, Agreed. Uh, I've got 150 yards, feet of range for casting. So when it comes time to actually do my part, I'm not worried about the redshift too much, honestly. Fair we enough. do still have a few hours of daylight. That was a nice break. Um, she gets up um, and says, uh, we can get to work on, on some of your suggestions. I found the um, trench and ramp idea rather appealing, um, as well as uh, the overgrowth, if we can if we can control it properly. Um, Arissa, um, what do you know of growing and cultivating the regenerative flowers from the flower seed? Is it something that can only happen there, or is there some way we can replant them here, or perhaps even you have seeds of those flowers? Uh, she says... Um... Uh, well, I actually used to have one of those uh, in my office, but uh, once you take them out of the flower seed, you got to take care of them like a regular flower. They don't last um, uh, outside of there. It's actually because the um, the flower seed itself is uh, holy ground. Uh, got nothing to do with the flowers proper, I suppose. Uh, they just happen to to come with the uh, the hallowing. Do you have any books about the rituals required to consecrate the ground in such a way? Oh, I I wish I did. Um, my 
my reading material is all long gone and I'm not an expert in that kind of thing, unfortunately. Um, about um, Guy Fien Larry's, um, maybe, maybe that's more in his wheelhouse. I wonder how he's doing these days. I've been chatting with him some. Um, he still isn't really all there, and I think um, kind of thinking about it from my perspective, that might have a little something to do with how uh, run down the temple is the building, you know. Um, I've been thinking maybe if some of you folks can get that put back together, he might get his brain all in working order, whatever whatever shape it's in. It's um, I guess I wanted to talk about being a bizarre brain shape, but um, so you're saying that that the residual power or the active power as battery is in the building itself. Well, for me, that's the case. For for guiding. Um, It seems like a similar situation, but uh, the temple doesn't have anything like the um, the proxy system in it that um, I got attached, and that was able to turn me into this, you know, cool ghost. Uh, hmm. Well, that would be worth cool, taking way, on as cool. a. I can just I can just walk into that obelisk right there and pop out wherever I want. That is pretty cool. Uh, that, that is cool. But uh, for that could be a good project to work can, on. Can next. you see through the surveillance device? Uh, sort of. I uh, well, I can see through it if it's activated, but it's actually a lot easier for me to just go from place to place and uh, poke my head out. It's like, um, kind of just like walking straight through a doorway. There's no, no time, no distance. That's definitely cool. Yeah, definitely. I mean, probably has something to do with the fact that I'm technically dead, but, um, you know, I'll I'll take it. Uh, but a anyway, um, somehow whatever whatever happened to Guy, uh, he ended up. I I think he's in a really similar situation to what happened to me here. My whole brain got It's like if you took out a little halfling woman's brain and unraveled it and strung it up all through the walls of your building. Uh, that's how the proxy was supposed to work in the first place. Like uh, noodles. Like making noodles. I understand. What an image. They do call it... The noodle. The noodle. <laughs> Uh, but I think the same thing has sort of happened to Guy, except except he he didn't have uh, a proxy in in his temple. It um, maybe it had something to do with with the well, maybe maybe his gods gave him a little hand. Um, I I'd like to think they you know let him. Let him move on or something like that, but what do I know? Um, or maybe it's that thing where they're keeping him here for a reason. Um, but I, I think because it's in such shambles, that's what's caused him to have trouble um, remembering, being himself. As well as being able to stay conscious for more than a moment at a time. It makes sense, though, that if he doesn't have a context, there wouldn't be anything to prompt memory. 
You just be loose in space. No context, no grounding, yeah. no nothing. Right, no context. Anyway, uh, if you can get some of your guys to maybe spend some time uh, working on the repairs over there, I know it would help you out anyway, but we might be able to, to bring Guy back. I'd be interested in working on that. It's it's definitely something we could lend a hand with, but I I feel like our combat prowess might be a little bit more use to, useful in the field. Likewise, uh, I feel like we potentially oh, I have under, construction I understand team. completely. Um, Guyvin was a fairly notable, powerful uh, holy man in his day. Um, and I think he'd be happy to help in your quest more, more, more than he can right now as a, um, as a mostly sleeping building. Um, if nothing else, he's got all sorts of knowledge. I don't have stuff, uh, divines and healings and that sort of thing. Lore that, you know, I, I never really studied myself. Um, we were friends, but we had two very different schools of focus throughout our lives. Um, plus, he was about 500 years older than me. Um, so, what I'm saying is, hopefully, if we manage to get him back, he can be some sort of help in all this. Well, if we get a break, I'd like to go back and give that a shot. Even if it's not us, you know, I think that someone in the expedition should be making this a priority. If there's a way to restore him, we straight up should. Yes. Yeah, I agree. To be honest, I thought there was already an effort underway, but I guess we haven't been able to allocate the resources for it yet. Uh, the, the Brigadier says, yes, we've been working on it, but... Uh... Thanks to the uh, battles recently, it's there have been a lot of shuffling around of people and labor. Um, now that we have a fortification here, I think it would be a little safer for us to to give um, this guy being a, a, a little more support and uh, continue to use this tower, Arisa, uh, with your hospitality as our as our forward point. So, I have a suggestion that I think will work well uh, for what we want to do here. Um, if everybody who wants to do this could Take a screenshot of this map. Actually, you don't need to take a screenshot. I will give you the map directly. Um, I believe it's... Yeah. I'm going to give you the map. It's in the expedition. Um, I think what we'll do is... Uh, Next redshift sounds like the plan is to go to this desert. Right. In the meantime, fortifications abound. Um, so in the next week, whoever wants to draw some stuff on that map, you can extend the borders of it by a few squares if you want to. Uh, or whatever you want to put on there, that's totally fine. Um, draw up what you want. Give me a like semi-useful diagram of it. Uh, and we'll say, um, get it done and post it back in the chat by Wednesday next week. And that'll be what you all are able to accomplish in your downtime. Sounds good. Good to me. 
Cool. Got it. Okay, then. That'll be the session for tonight. A little bit short, but that is a pretty good stopping point, and we'll have some um, interesting content next week. Content. Yeah, Serb, could you pin that map? Yeah, sure. Thank you. And like I said, just take it, download it, draw all over it, and then post it back in there. And um, whatever you do, we'll, we'll adjudicate it and make whatever needs to be made canon, canon. Brilliant. Yeah, perfect. Thanks for the session, cool. man. Yeah, thank you for joining everyone. Thanks, um, Herb.